flat out shoot. Look for him to get more touches in the offense and take more of a leadership role within the team. Now, recently, our Tim Neverett sat down with Toppert, and they talked about many things, including his long range shot. How many three pointers you got in you this year? I don't know. Well, uh, they move the line back, so you know I'm gonna have to shoot a little bit further back, but I think I'll be able to uh, make a few. Well, I think that's a big story for anybody in your situation, because the Lobos rely on you to hit from the outside. When did you start practicing from the outside? Uh, I I remember uh, you know when I was younger, I was I was like the first shot that I always wanted to shoot. My dad uh, was pretty good at shooting those those threes, and I just uh, naturally grew into. Uh, wanting to shoot the long range shot and uh, you know I've just developed from there. And when did you start practicing with the new distance? With the new distance uh, just uh, uh, over the summer we uh, really got a chance to work with the new line and and uh, you know it was pretty uh, pretty different and I was just uh, a little bit more aware of where the line was at making sure my toes were behind the line. Is it a where you felt you had to go out and shoot more during the summer or did you shoot just as much as you normally would in an off season? I uh, just shot just as much as I normally would in the off season. Uh, mainly just had to work on my footwork coming off screens and and getting both feet behind the line. How do you think it's going to affect the Lobos game plan because it's a pretty big part of it. Yeah it, uh, I think it'll affect it a little bit. Uh, I know uh, we'll have a lot more spacing uh, room for uh, guys to drive in and and uh, more room for uh, uh, post ups and 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 I think I'll be able to get uh, a few more opportunities, maybe spacing out, and and uh, we uh, we have a good squad, and I'm really looking forward to it. Well, basketball is a lot about math, and you know if you move the line back a few feet, the percentages might drop down a little bit. Then there's going to be a new standard for three-point shooting percentages. You might look at it and say, I was shooting so much better last year, <laughs> you know, but it's still pretty good for right. this year. Yeah, they're trying to make it trying to make it harder on me this year to to make a few shots. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're uh, we have a great great team that's uh, capable of shooting uh, the three point shot. Um, uh, not only me, but uh, everybody on the team can can really shoot the ball, and they've really impressed me. Now, Topper's numbers from last year were impressive. He averaged over 10 a game. He made 85 of 177 long balls. That was good enough for 48 percent. That's pretty good. He started 13 games and averaged over 25 minutes per outing. And look for all these numbers to hopefully improve. Now, the three-point line is moving back some. How is that going to affect players in the conference, players like Chad Topper? Well, uh, Chad Toppert, it probably won't affect a whole lot uh, because he has great range. He could probably step back three, four feet and still make at a decent uh, percentage. I think there are certain players in the league that will uh, be affected greatly because they were maybe at their max at the old uh, three-point range. So to get back another foot is going to affect it, but it is going to allow better spacing, better, more opportunities to drive and post up. See, I, I hate to disagree with Larry, but I will. <laughs> they, they, uh, they're the cutting down my little town I like to call Trayville. The reason the rules, the rules committee didn't check me but I think it's a bad adjustment to the rule uh, teams could only shoot 39 uh, percent you you saw the elimination you didn't see a lot of zones because of the 19-9 I think it's going to do the exact opposite I think you're going to see more packed in you know packed down defenses uh, uh, zone defenses and I think the scoring is going to go down I think they couldn't make the 19-9 at a high percentage I don't like the rule change I think it hurts college basketball hey if it's not Bro, yep. don't try to fix it. Coach, in a way, I do agree with you because I think that the three-point line at the old uh, spot, it made it, uh, it was, I called it the great equalizer. It gave teams that Absolutely. Didn't, have, that didn't have talent, maybe the ability to shoot the ball, create ways to get three-point shooting. Uh, I do believe that there are teams that will play more zone, they'll pack it in, and if you have a son, or, well, a son in this case, uh, teach them how to shoot because if they can make threes, they're getting a scholarship. So do you think it was a good rule or a bad rule? I think it's a bad rule change because I think that I agree 100%. You know, I, uh, I'm, I'm this first time I apologize. Ooh. Air Force, seven years. Uh, we depended on three-point shooting. It gave a lot of teams an opportunity to have success in the in the NCAA tournament in March when all that fun is happening. The, one of the big reasons is three-point shooting. Well, there were some other rules implemented this year as well in the league. They eliminate the first lane space nearest to the basket on both sides and use of the courtside monitor for flagrant fouls. What do you think about these rules, Coach? Well, I, I think it's a good move. Uh, women, women's basketball eliminated that first lane spot, so it opens up on the free throw how I felt. Uh, they're, they're taking away my Trayville. Uh, it's a bad rule. The uh, rules committee should have checked with me. It's going to uh, pack in zone defenses. We don't want to see that. The game 
game is great the way it was. And then, of course, uh, the monitor, that's always a good rule change. Yeah, I, again, uh, well, the three-point line, that's a key component. The other rules, to a degree, they're important. But the three-point line going back, I think it, it gives benefit to the Kentuckys, North Carolinas, the haves. The teams that are struggling, mid-majors and so forth, to really over uh, overachieve and do some special things in the NCAA tournament and during the course of the year, this rule was important. And I wonder why the rule was implemented. Interesting point of view. Because I wasn't on the committee. Because <laughs> he wasn't on the committee, that's why. Time for another break here on the show. And when we return, we'll take a peek at New Mexico's non-conference opponents, what games are already circled on the schedule. And our analysts will give us some predictions. You'll want to stick around for those. You're watching the New Mexico Men's Basketball Preview Show only on the mountain. I've been in the, the Mountain West for a long time, and, and I've, seen, uh, I've seen it every year. And, and, you know, this year could be just as strong as it's been, you know, in, in the past five years. Well, we will know early how good the Lobos will be this season by how they do in their non-conference schedule. So let's take a look. The Lobos will have home games against some pretty good schools, Ole Miss and New Mexico State. But check out the road games. Creighton, VCU, the mighty Drake Bulldogs, Texas Tech. The Lobos will have their hands full. Absolutely. Uh, you look at the uh, uh, away schedule, New Mexico State, difficult. That's always an exciting rivalry for them. Great, great challenge, Texas Tech. So there's some good stuff. I fully expect them to come out a non-conference schedule with only about two losses. Well, they may not have the great uh, BCS names on there, but at San Diego, uh, San Diego had a, a run last year, and of course at Creighton, that's always a tough contest, and of course Texas Tech on the road. Uh, so this, this, they have 15 home games. They play in this tournament, Cancun tournament. I, I, I expect to get that uh, call. That trip? Yeah, <laughs> I, I got that trip. Uh, but they play the first two of that tournament at home. Then VCU or Drake or Vanderbilt uh, down in Cancun. Uh, this is a team that did very well on the road uh, later in the year. But remember, there, there, there's going to be a growing process with this basketball team because of all the newcomers. Uh, coach will push the buttons, and then he'll come up with the right buttons to push. So it will take a little time for this team to gel. But when you have those veterans coming back and, and Tony Dandridge, uh, you should get off to a great start. Now, of those away games, which one do you think will be the biggest challenge? Maybe Texas Tech, VCU? Yeah, I mean, Texas Tech, VCU, but I'm going to go with New Mexico State. I think just because of the, the in-state rivalry, it's always there. It doesn't matter the old saying, cliche. It doesn't matter who's good, but any particular year. Going to New Mexico State, that's a big, big challenge. Tough game for them. Well, the second game of the year may be their toughest because it's at Creighton, and they'll only have one game under their belt at home. So that the, the, the great Creighton Blue Jays always are very dangerous at home, so I look for that to be a tough game. If they're able to, to pull that one off, then then the rest of the schedule starts to get, to get be in a situation where they get some more home games and they get some more momentum. All right, Coach, let's, how about some predictions? You're batting leadoff. What you got? Well, I, I think uh, they'll finish higher than the, the media. You guys never get it right. <laughs> uh, I picked them. Uh, this is a team that's going to challenge for the Mountain West Conference. Uh, agree 100%. I, I have them at second in the conference regular season. Uh, who knows what happens in the uh, postseason, but I think uh, they deserve to be ranked higher. All right, that will wrap it up for the New Mexico men's basketball preview show. For the coaches, Marty Fletcher and Larry Mangino, I'm Marius Payton. Thanks so much for tuning in, and take care, everybody. Dude.